everybody, my name is Brian G and this is Trifecta G Motoring. Today we're going to be doing a review on a 2015 Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack, my Scat Pack, here in the Salt Lake City area. As you can see we got a pretty cool backdrop right here. Uh, this is about probably one of the most awesome uh, murals that I've ever seen in my entire life. So with that being said, we're going to go over everything on this vehicle from driving dynamics to the interior quality, the interior itself, features, and everything else. With that, let's go ahead and get this car on the road. Yeah. Now, the 2015 Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack is uh, new. Um, well, it was new in 2015 when they did the refresh on the current seventh generation body of the Charger. As you can see here, it's in B5 blue. I've owned it for about, say, two and a half years now, and absolutely loving it. I have to apologize off the bat. This is going to be kind of weird, even though it's my first video. Uh, the audio quality from my GoPros when I was filming outside wasn't all that great because there was a lot of wind noise, and I didn't want to subject you guys to that. So, what we're going to go over here first off is uh, pretty much everything about the car. Powering this Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack is a massive 6.4 liter 392 cubic inch Hemi V8. Now this car will now this engine does go ahead and push out quite a bit of power, 485 horsepower at 6100 RPMs, and torque figures are 475 foot pounds at 4200 RPMs. Now with all of that power, you can't expect great gas economy, and that's actually true here. Well, if you take into account the fuel economy for the city and the, the highway, city is 15, highway is 25, and then a combined average of 18 miles per gallon, which isn't really that great. But you do have a lot of power to play with, and it's a beautiful car, and very fun to drive on top of that. Now, when we get down to the wheels of the car, that's where we actually see some cool things. Now their stock, uh, so the wheels that I have on my car are the stock wheels that came with it. Uh, they are 20 by 9 inch in both front and rear. They're aluminum alloy. Uh, they do have uh, black pockets on them, kind of like a, a gloss black. Kind of matches the roof of the car to be honest with you. Um, and then in those pockets you have little silver bits. Um, silver accents if you will uh, now these these wheels are wrapped in the stock tires or at least they were stock at the time when I bought it uh, those are 245 45 20s I actually upgraded my wheels well I upgraded the tires on the wheels to 255 40 20s Michelin's instead of the Goodyear Eagle F ones that it came stock with I personally feel like the the Michelin should have been on the car in the first place but hey what you gonna do uh, the car does not come with a spare tire. It's one of those, unfortunately, inflator kits. It, it's not all that great, but again, you you make compromises when you have a car like this. Plus, if we had a spare tire in there, it'd weigh down even more, which would throw off the weight distribution. Which, about that, the weight distribution on this car is not all that bad. So the weight distribution is claimed by Dodge, or FCA rather, at 54 in the front, 46% in the rear. Uh, the car does weigh quite a bit. It is 4,400 pounds, which kind of makes sense why it has that 6.4 liter Hemi. It definitely needs that to get it off the, the line pretty quick. Uh, so that actually brings me to the next thing here. To go ahead and stop all that power, the car does come stock with Brembo brakes. Uh, so two piston uh, Brembos in the rear, but the big ones are up in the front, four piston Brembos in the front with cross ventilated brakes. Uh, the front brakes are actually pretty big. Uh, they are 15.4 inches in the front. As far as the rears, I don't quite know. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to make up a figure there if I don't know it. But still nonetheless, Brembos all the way around, car stops on a dime. Now that that's all covered, let's go ahead and move on to the interior. All right, so here's the interior of the RT Sky Pack. We're going to go over some of the features that are kind of cool about this thing. First off, 
the steering wheel. This is nice. It's a, uh, well, looks like a regular Dodge Charger steering wheel, but it's leather wrapped. Really good um, grips. Pretty awesome. The gauges themselves are actually pretty cool too. Pretty retro. Kind of a throwback to the 60s. Kind of hard to see that, but there you go. Boom. But every time you fire this thing up, it's kind of a special event. What you have is a push button start right here. Uh, mine, I went ahead and put a little rumble bee on there. So that's kind of cool. So what we're gonna do is just hit the button and see it start. <laughs> little rumble bee goes across the screen. As you can see, the middle is a uh, it's an LCD screen, uh, a little bit smaller um, than the, the main screen, which is an 8.4 inch touch screen Uconnect system right here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the AC down a little bit for you guys so that it doesn't blast you. As you can see here, uh, it's pretty responsive actually. You can go ahead and change radio stations just by clicking on that. Not too bad for 2015. The card does also come with a hymn, which nobody ever listens to anymore. FM and Sirius Satellite XM radio. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it does have traffic alerts, which are pretty cool, as well as weather alerts. Um, and as you can see right there, hands free phone and Bluetooth audio. So that's, that's, that's pretty much a must for me in cars these days. So if you go ahead and check out all the other options here, first we've got media. Media, you can go ahead and play through a USB. Uh, auxiliary jack, Bluetooth audio, or even an SD card, which I'll show you in a second, but there's no CD player in this car. FCA vehicles have been kind of straying away from that situation, so there you are. Cool thing here is, uh, say you're listening to music and you wanted to still see what was playing, but then you also want to see the GPS. Well, you got a map button right there, and this will tell you exactly where you are, just like any other map. It's kind of cool. Um, little 3D view. Uh, kind of cool thing to see there. On the GPS, the uh, car on the GPS is actually a charger. Pretty awesome. So, moving on from there, you have your controls button, which gives you the option to go ahead and you know turn on and turn off your mirror dimmer. Uh, also, turn off the screen itself. And as you can see, the front has heated front and cooled seats, or ventilated seats rather, as well as a heated steering wheel. From there, you got your apps, just like every other FCA vehicle. It's kind of cool here. You got your performance pages. Uh, also, those options, those buttons that you saw there earlier on the controls screen, they're available here. You got driver heated seat, ventilated driver seat, uh, heated steering wheel, also navigation. So pretty much everything is uh, here that you're going to be needing. There's also a store, which is kind of cool. Uh, next, you got climate controls. So with the climate controls, uh, they're not all just on the screen. Yes, you can go ahead and modify it just by going up and down with the touch screen there. It's pretty responsive itself. Uh, nothing really remarkable here, but you also have a standalone button system down here for those people that aren't into the screens. So you can go ahead and change the airspeed, get the airspeed down, uh, as well as the temperature controls, turn on the AC, all your normal stuff, which is pretty awesome. That also brings us to these buttons right here. Uh, right here you have your lane keep assist, which will keep the car in its own lane, uh, which is actually pretty awesome for the freeway. And here you have forward collision alert and assistance. So this car will stop itself, which has saved my butt a couple times here in Salt Lake City because Salt Lake City drivers don't know how to drive. Also have your traction control button and then your park sensors for the rear. Unfortunately, this car does not come with front parking sensors, but hey, you do what you gotta do. Also, you have your sport button here, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Um, right here, you also have your super track pack. Now, super track pack goes up here, turns onto the screen, and gives you the option to go ahead and modify your launch control, activate launch control in your drive mode select. So you can change the RPMs that you want your launch control to be at. Um, kind of a cool feature there. That way we can dial it in on test and tune days. Driver mode select is not as robust as an SRT vehicle, but still it's not too terribly bad. 
Um, right here, you can go ahead and change uh, the sport mode settings. So you can put normal uh, for, say, the engine, sport for the tran engine transmission, paddles on off, traction control on off, and then the steering has actually a couple of different settings. You got comfort. You also have normal, which personally I like normal more than comfort because uh, I like to have a little bit more feel on the road. And then sport, which is significantly tighter than all the others. So that's actually kind of cool uh, to go through that. Um, you can also set it up for the default system as well. Uh, as you can see here, I have the paddle shifters on so I can use them whenever I want. Engine and transmission, I have them in normal. Uh, so it's not jerky when I'm driving around. Uh, the traction control, always keep that on normal. Uh, just in case, uh, but definitely on sport mode I have that off, or set for sport rather. Up here you have your uh, performance pages, so we'll go ahead and click on that guy. Takes it a little bit to load, but when it does it's actually pretty cool. The one thing that I'm a little disappointed on, this is a scat pack, so it's a, you know, it's an upper scale of an RT charger, but still they have an RT charger on there and you could change whatever it looks like. So yeah, uh, you can't, well, you really can't change what it looks like. What it means, you can go ahead and change the views of it. I don't know what the purpose of this is, but whatever. Uh, as you can see, the front bumper and grill are completely different than the one that are on the RT Scat Pack. Same thing with the wheels. And my car is blue, B5 blue, not this red color. But hey, what are you going to do? You still have the performance pages, so it's pr still pretty awesome. Uh, right here, you can click on timers. What this will do is keep track of your 0 to 60, 0 to 100, the quarter mile, eighth mile, braking distance and then break, break for a mile per hour. Uh, it also has options to save that, of course, into your Uconnect system. My last, there's not really anything there because we just fired up the, the car, but my best, I'm actually pretty happy about. As you can see there, we have a zero to 60 pull of 4.2 seconds and zero to 100, 9.8 seconds, which is not too shabby for a big sedan like this. Did the eighth mile in seven point well seven point five seconds rather at a thirty one miles per hour, but the quarter mile, I rocked a twelve point four at one hundred and ten miles per hour. That was in Pomona, California, at the uh, Auto Club Raceway, which is pretty cool. So I have that a uh, little bit of bragging rights for myself. Next, you have your gauges. Uh, gauge set number one is your standard coolant temperature oil temperature, oil pressure. Uh, what I like the most is um, moving on to the engine button. This right here will show you live horsepower feeds, torqued feeds, what gear you're in, oil pressure, pretty much everything that you, everything that you need to know as well as a speedometer. So you can see here just idling, the torque is actually moving and so is the horsepower, but if we give it a little bit of gas, pretty cool. Uh, lastly, you do have a g-force meter, which of course since we're not really moving right now, uh, it's not going to show you anything, but trust me, it's still pretty kind of cool. So all in all, not too bad, not too shabby. The interior does have this really cool looking, almost quilted leather, I would say, with the stitching, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, dashboard does come with uh, a charger uh, logo there, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, up here you do have uh, what looks like your home link. So you have, you know, access to three different garage doors or whatever you want to go ahead and set it up with. Lights, you just push on them, turn them on. I upgraded mine to LED, but you could just keep them stock. They're normally halogens. You also have this right here. You could put your sunglasses in or just any random thing that you really want. Uh, it does come with an assist system and then a 911 button in the event that you have an accident. You also have to have the Uconnect sus subscription service, but you know, still pretty cool. Pretty cool to know that you're able to have that. Now these buttons right here do control the sunroof. It does have a nice shade. It's actually a thick shade, not one of those uh, thin ones that the sun can still shine through. It just completely 
blacks out the car when you do that. Also has a vent feature. And auto open, you get your wind diffuser there as well. So not too bad, it's actually pretty cool. I think you just push one button to shut it. And you're set. As for the seats, they have a little scat pack logo on them, which is pretty cool. Something that sets them aside from a regular Dodge Charger RT. As far as the controls are concerned, you do have uh, dual memory uh, seats, which will save pretty much everything. And also, when I say pretty much saves everything, uh, if you're on, say, X96 on one, and then Sirius Satellite Radio on number two, it will remember exactly what radio station that you were on and basically what media system that you were using. Uh, down here, you have your switch gear uh, for the windows. Uh, the car doesn't have power folding mirrors, which I kind of wish it did. It make getting into the garage a lot easier, especially at my house, because our brother has his Go Mango Dodge Charger in there. Uh, you also have uh, your rear windows. You can lock them out. Uh, pretty standard stuff. Unlock, lock. And down here, you have more controls. This little dial here uh, will basically just control your uh, your headlights. You could push that down to control the fog lights on and off. Uh, right here, this guy will go ahead and uh, control basically the, the cabin light system. Uh, and this is for the ambient lighting system, which are located here, the cup holders down there. Um, down there, it's, it's just all around a, a good situation. I, I love this car. Uh, there are some Easter eggs in here. If you look into this, <laughs> this little cubby, it is, well, it says Dodge Brothers in there, which is kind of a cool Easter egg, a little bit of throwback to where Dodge came from. Uh, you do have your eight speed ZF uh, transmission lever here. Uh, you can go park, reverse, the light changes each time that you go into a new one, slide over for manual, put it back over. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, right here you have your cup holders. Like I said, they are lit up. They got these LEDs here. So at nighttime, looks pretty cool with a little bit of a aluminum trim. Shut that guy. Ooh, my water and here you go you got your center console uh it's nicely padded uh it's a little bit eh, it's nice we'll just put it that way let's lift that guy up even though it is a mess in here uh you can see you do have auxiliary usb and sd card slot which is pretty cool the thing it is pretty deep um, but there's nothing really special about this. It's the same thing as any other FCA vehicle. Uh, whoops, there's my keys to the Cadillac. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it here for the front. For the rear of the car, uh, let's go ahead and open up the door so you can see. I'm about six feet, uh, six feet tall, and the back of my, well, actually my seat is set up for that. I have about maybe, an inch of leg room. It's not that great, but it's not that bad. But the cool thing is, we'll shut the door. It's kind of loud out there. The cool thing is, the seats themselves, you sink into them, and uh, honestly, it, it it's comfortable. It doesn't feel like you're squished back here. Uh, right here, you do have some cool stuff. You got your, your rear vents, just like any other car, but then you also have heated seats with two levels as well as two USB ports. That's actually pretty awesome. Not a lot of cars have that these days. Same quilting and everything back here. They didn't change anything on the quality on the door from the front to the rear. It's all the same. I really do appreciate that. And right here, you do have a center armrest and it's nicely padded as well. And I all forgot, it has a little bit of a container here. You could put microfiber towels or whatever you want inside that. It's pretty cool. Same thing as in the front. Look at that. These will go hang glow at night. Uh, it's kind of a cool feature uh, just to see the omniance of everything around you. Uh, right there, the door handles light up as well, just like the front. All in all, 
really nice interior. The seats are leather backed, but then they also have this really supportive Alcantara uh, suede-like material in the middle. Around corners, it really holds you in the front and in the back. As far as headroom, you can see I'm back here. Again, I'm six feet tall, and that is not an issue whatsoever. Now, this car does come with uh, two keys, actually. Um, at least that's what I got when I bought it. As you can see here, it's just standard FCA key. You got unlock, lock, uh, you can open up the trunk, and then remote start with a panic button. On the back, it just says Dodge on it. Not the red key, or the coveted red key as people say, but who cares? So as you can see here, let's go ahead and pop this. Boom! Trunk opens right up. Unfortunately, it is not power closing, so you're going to have to do that on your own. Like I said earlier, the RT Scat Pack is equipped with remote start, so what you would do is just pull the key out and then click the button right here, twice. And she bursts to life. Check this out. We're going to put the key inside the car. Keep in mind, this is the only key that I have right now. We'll keep it right there. Okay. And we will shut the trunk. Okay, opens right back up. Safety feature. All right, let's go take this bad boy for a drive. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hop on the freeway real quick. And see what she has. So let's put it in manual mode. Uh, in looks like normal mode as well, not sport yet, just to see what the difference is. So here we go. She's definitely got some grunt on this thing. So, as you can hear, this car is fast. It's got 485 horsepower. That's a lot. That's a lot of horsepower for the money. When you think about its competition, uh, it's actually quite a good value. Now, as you can see on the freeway, it's actually pretty smooth. Uh, right now, we're just in regular mode. Um, just you call it normal mode. And the car does, does pretty good. Uh, it keeps its lane pretty well. Uh, the so you can see the ride is a little bit bumpy here. Uh, that's mainly because the RT Scat Pack comes with a fixed Bilstein shock system instead of the adaptive Bilstein shock system that the SRT models come with. Um, because of that, the RT Scat Pack is uh, a lot cheaper than getting an SRT. Uh, this thing was a base price of $39,995 uh, with all the options, which this car, the previous owner, had every single option. I'm talking adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, uh, navigation, sunroof, and a really rare one actually. The roof is painted a different color than the car. It's actually a gloss black, which is kind of cool. It sets it off a little bit. It's pretty much one of the only tunnels in downtown Salt Lake City. So what we're going to do is uh, go around here, take a left-hand turn, then another left-hand turn, and then yet another left-hand turn, and we'll go ahead and hit it. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. acceleration pull.
that's the review of my 2015 Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack. Go ahead and comment below um, and let me know what you think about this type of video. So, stay tuned, hit that like button, much appreciated, uh, and please subscribe. But with that, have a great day.